Welcome to What's Up in Jeju, where I visit places around the island and talk about what's happening with Hashtag Daily K's host, Peter Bint. Where are we going? What are you wanting to introduce to us? Right. So, Peter, before we get started, let me just ask you a question, and mm. maybe our listeners can think about it, too. Okay. Have you ever had the chance to actually work, work with stones or rocks or even bricks, anything of the sort? Well, I don't think it's nice to call our backroom staff any of those things, but yeah, some of them <laughs> just sit there like rocks from time to time. No, I'm kidding. All um, right, new season, everybody. Peter's gone. With... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am not going to be here tomorrow. Um, stones, rocks, or bricks. No, I've never done any building work. Like a few of my friends part time when they were younger actually helped, you know, build walls and houses and stuff, transporting bricks, but that looked like terrible, terribly hard labor. Um, no, I, I can't think if I've ever worked with any of those things. I don't think so. Have I mean, you? Well, uh, me personally, I, it's been more for art. So I've, I've worked with like marble stone okay. and it's just st sanding Ooh. and sanding and you just get the grain like finer and finer. It's just hours of sanding. But I do have a, a wow. deep respect for sometimes I watch like YouTube videos of bricklayers. You know, it's so satisfying uh -huh. to see them just just put out the, uh, you know, the, the, <laughs> the cement. It's it's just so methodic and, and it's so nice. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. The way they scrape it off, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, so you you ventured into a village renowned for its stone masons this week. That's why we're talking along these lines. That's absolutely right. And you also mentioned the big three, Peter, women, uh, wind, and stones and rock. And uh, great callback mm -hmm. to one of the earlier episodes. And so this is not just about stones, but stone masonry. And I had the opportunity to explore a quaint village nestled in the Halim district last weekend for the Munsu Dong Dol Japari, also known as the Munsu Dong Stone Festival. And you know what time it is. Ooh. It is. Is it map time? It's map time. Okay. So we got the map here. Uh, you're better than Dora and her little map, map in her map, rucksack. Map, I want map, it to map, have a map. nickname. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> it's map time. <laughs> And so right here uh, is Jeju Island. Airport is on top because that's Jeju Shi. And uh -huh. so this is where the town of uh, Munsu Dong is. And uh, so if, okay. if you can see, it's kind of wedged in between the coast and the 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 uh, Mount Hala. But it doesn't do it justice. This uh -huh. area is actually very hilly and very rocky. And so Ooh. it is renowned okay. for its stone masonry. Oh, lovely. Okie dokie. Uh, you mentioned an interesting title there, Tol Chapari. It's yeah. not, it reminded me a bit of Japagetti, the like instant black bean <laughs> noodles, but it's not talking about that at all. Munsu Dong is a, the name of the village. Tol means stones or rocks, and in the Jeju language, mm -hmm. Japari means to have fun with or to play with. So how did this village celebrate Jeju's stone masonry? Because Jeju is famous for those volcanic rock walls that you see everywhere. Uh, through art exhibitions, photo displays, and also the presence of skilled stonemasons and experts from all over the world. And they were active in uh, the community events and it just brought in everybody. And here's the thing, the, the, the big highlight of the festival was the restoration of a particular stone tower which I'll delve into shortly uh, after presenting our first picture. So let's take a look at that. Okay. We've got you in this photo looking at what looks like maybe a photo, which <laughs> is interesting. It's mind-bending that's on one of those stone walls in Jeju. But usually the stone walls are quite small, like the one on the right-hand side. Even that's quite tall up to the waist. But the one you're looking at, it's way taller than you. That's a very good point, Peter. So Munsu Dong is situated in a hilly mountainous area. And so when you're standing on a top of the village's center, the region's uh, Feng Shui, or the Peng Su Jiri, right? Uh, it suggests mm -hmm. a weak energy flow from the east. So to counterbalance this, the villagers erected five Pangsa top or Pangsa towers. Peter, when you were in Jeju, did you oh. ever notice any, like, not just mounds, but proper rock towers when you were in Jeju? No. Yeah. No, I can't think I did. Like, the ones that people make that are just knee high for good luck, but that was it. So I didn't really start noticing them until pretty much after this this episode. But the um, the towers, 
you'll find around Jeju scattered around, but especially in this yeah. area because it's it's famous for the stone masonry. You'll find that there's kind of a base here, and they're a little bit different. This is a little crooked, and then there's maybe a second part, and then there's the top uh -huh. mound here. Okay, and then on top oh. of that is kind of a central like like a I would not call it a keystone, but like a figure stone at the very top. But the interesting thing is inside, within the the base, when they start building, they'll put some charm of good yeah. luck. It could be a ball of yarn or, or a thread for longevity. Ooh. It could be a pot of rice, right? So whenever you find these towers nice. scattered around, I've seen some as tall as me. I've seen some almost as high as a building. And you'll find wow. that these... Um, towers are all over the island and inside they have a, a sort of a good luck charm which is pretty cool that's interesting and that's to counterbalance certain energy flows in in many cases that's absolutely right and here's the thing during the jeju uprising or the jeju april 3rd incident which uh, many innocent jeju residents were tortured and killed due to suspected communist sympathies the villagers they had to dismantle they had to break down these towers right because instead oh, no. of these towers, they built these walls to protect their villages. Hence that picture, that massive wall. Now, these fortress uh -huh. walls that surrounded these villages, they have broken apart and succumbed to time. But this town is unique to that because it's still standing strong. But the really cool thing about this wow. festival is they're taking rocks from the, the fortress wall and they're rebuilding. They rebuilt in front of us, and you'll see it in the video, they re rebuilt one of the Bangsa Top, which is amazing. Oh, they're doing it in reverse. All right, can we get to the video, Marku? Let's delve right into it, yeah. Okay, so what are we going to see in this first vid? So this first video, um, it's uh, centered around the main house, which is by Zhou Huan Jin. He's one of the stonemasons. In fact, he is the uh, principal of the only stonemason school in Jeju. So... Uh, this first wow. first video is going to be centered around that building, and you'll see what's inside. Nice. All right, we are at the Munsudong Stone Festival, and today we are celebrating everything stones and rocks. And this is a bit different from the stone park that we went to earlier this season. We're talking, as you can see here, stone masonry and stone walls. Today's a really uh, cool festival to celebrate this town and everything from crafts and, and artisans from all over the world who have worked on stonework and, and stacking stones, which is quite the thing here in Jeju, it's all going down. So I'm excited, let's go check it out. All right, we are at the main venue and look at this building, look at the architecture. Uh, here's where the festival is being taken place. We have galleries inside, we have the stone masons and behind we also have the restoration on one of, one of the town's towers and I'll talk about that more in the studio but this is a big deal in fact just in a an hour or so they're gonna put the final stone on top of that so we'll hopefully get to to film that as well um so we've got another photo here yeah uh, that we're gonna yeah. get on yeah just take a look what it, is this that you're holding so this is my uh little smile rock and what it is is one of the activities where uh and you'll see it in the video where you can craft out of one of the basalt volcanic rocks a little a little pot that you can uh put plants in and it's best for succulents oh so that's not just you sculpting that it's sculpturing that into like a smiley face but it can be used to grow plants in that's right that's right and it's really good because um you know you could put any plant in there but because the the rock is so porous it doesn't retain water i mean the rock itself is almost like a sponge so it will suck the moisture out however cacti and succulents are really great for such a pot and you'll even see um succulents growing naturally on lava rock walls or in the lava rock here on the island so yeah it's perfect for that oh that is amazing but are you allowed to take those stones i mean did you get to take that home so that's a very good question um it should be noted that collecting natural stones from jeju for personal use is actually prohibited so you can't just really pick up a volcanic rock and pocket it however the organizers no. made it clear that it is permissible to take processed rocks so if you actually work on them that are under 10 centimeters in size and they also advised attendees to carry the festival's brochure to explain to air <laughs> airport security like hey I, I have official permission from from the village to take rocks but that's actually one thing to, to oh, think about wow. yeah. yeah so so you're not usually allowed to take 
rocks even under 10 centimeters size but as part of that festival that's kind of a benefit no because we get so many visitors to jeju if we were allowed i'm sure they'd disappear really quickly um so you had a chance to interact with an international stonewall mason so it's not just locals here right at the mm. festival there were four international stone experts or stone masons there was one from scotland two from japan and one from Italy. And what's really cool is that these these four stone experts, they weren't just there admiring or talking to people. Actually, they weren't really talking at all. They were busy helping with the tower. So the village folk were just like, wow. okay, you're a part of this. And and they were they were just working. They were just working on the tower. And it's really impressive because the rate at which they built the tower was, I mean, technically in the span of two days, but I would almost argue it was in a single day that they built this tower. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. And we've got a photo now on the stream. That is not Jeju, is it? Right. Otherwise, I really regret not visiting that place. Exactly. So this is a quiz for you, Peter, and maybe for our listeners who are watching. Okay. Uh, where do you think this is, this this image? It looks kind of European to me. Like mm -hmm. there are a few villages on the rocks in parts of Europe. It doesn't look like Northern Europe where it's cold and miserable a lot of the time. Um, if you're not watching the stream, you need to see this picture. Like, houses are literally on the edge of the cliff there. The colours too. Uh, very colourful yeah. as well. Yeah, it's beautiful. This is the home of Margarita Emilio, an Italian stonemason. Oh. She is the president because of you... Coque Vernazza in Italy. And Vernazza is one of the five villages that make up Cinque Terre. Cinque Terre is not just a cluster of homes. It's pretty much a track of five villages along the coast of Italy. And, you know, wow. they, they have stone terraces, stone walls, and it's a, a lot of stone stacking as well. So Ms. Emerio is an expert at stones, at stone stacking, because it, she is actually she legit. She lives there. Yep, yep. She's, she's in her wow. uh, village of Vernazza. She told me that I think there are a total of 200 residents, official residents of her village, uh -huh. but they encounter some 10,000 tourists a day. <gasps> oh yeah. my goodness. Wow. No wonder it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. But the stones that she works with or that help prop up that village, they're like essential. They're not just for aesthetic purposes. They help with rainwater and runoff and prevent land from washing away that's absolutely right uh but the thing is back in 2011 there was a deadly flood so mud just rushed into the streets so margarita she's been a key to restoring and preserving this this culture this stone culture back in cinque terre but uh it's uh -huh. also a bit of a, a dying art terracing right so her mission is not only to help restore the walls but also cement no pun intended this younger generation's yeah. connection to their land but also she's bringing in a lot of uh, uh foreigners and, and visitors as well to learn about and help out with uh stone stacking and restoration wow that's amazing so we've got an interview with margarita for your last video let's check it out mm -hmm. because you've you've been here for several times and you you've met the folk and maybe even worked with them i guess what's your what's your uh experience with working with volcanic rock jeju volcanic rock how's it feel you know in your hands and you know working with it well it's well, as I said, completely different. My stone like breaks in slabs that look like small books, and I can tell like almost by heart all the shapes I can get with my stone. Right. But here, all the stones have completely different shapes. Uh, some masters shape them roughly. Uh, some masters can place them even without doing that, which is what I admire the most. It's like how you can just effortlessly place every stone in their correct place to achieve your your outcome the, the outcome you want and um, yes uh, the tower I think it's amazing I don't have towers in my place because this is like more like a community thing like to protect the community and we don't have that uh, I really really like this idea that you can have like community come together work together for the project to give just for the community and not just for personal gains for example agriculture all right, they're just putting the finishing touches on the tower. Wow, so there's the this bottom This is a big platform. deal. These towers yep, uh, the are being one. remade That's right. to give the village good fortune. They were broken down initially uh, to make the fortress, but now they broke down the fortress 
and they are actually going to rebuild these towers. So just in within minutes, they're going to put on the final uh, keystone on the top there. So uh, let's take a look. They, we also have a ceremony. So let's enjoy. Oh, wow. You got some like pungul nori. Yeah, that's it looks right. like the traditional music. If you notice, uh, just behind me, the man on top with the brown shirt, that's Mr. Joe. That's the, uh, the, the OG uh, Jeju stonemason who's the principal of the school I was talking about. I think you might see oh, him later, nice. a little bit later in this video as well. Yeah. So they're using like some heavy lifting equipment so that's, to, to get some of the heaviest stones up to the top. Well, that stone right there, that's the final stone. And if you can take a look at the shape, what do you think it looks like, wow. Peter? It looks a little bit like a like a bear or some kind of four-legged animal yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. I originally thought it was a bear, but it's more like a, almost like a sheepdog. And uh, they oh. actually had to find the stone in Sogipo oh. and bring it up. And there you go. There's the stone. Oh, wow. To be the key stone, mm -hmm. they found a really interestingly shaped one. That's oh, right. That's so meaningful, isn't it? Wow, and I, I love how the Italian lady is so, like, impressed with the community coming together and the meaning behind the stone tower as well. Jeju rules! Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> that's it, just finished. Jeju's amazing. The end. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she definitely knows her stone. She's been here several times on the mainland, and she's been in Jeju. Wow. Anything stones, they'll bring her in. She knows her stuff, and it's not just stonework and and getting her hands dirty which she does and for some for some magical reason her blazer is still like dust free but uh she's also <sighs> really heavily delving into the social aspect what does it mean what is the culture behind stone masonry and stone building how does that differ between <sighs> countries so yeah it's it's pretty amazing stuff what a cool festival you've highlighted for us this week, Mark. Thank you so much, and we look forward to next Tuesday. It's been my pleasure, Peter. What's Up in Jeju is supported by the JDC, which is creating a free international city that resembles nature, embraces the future, and reaches the world. I'm Mark Wilson-Che, with writer Che Jung-Yun. This is Arirang Radio.